This stacked area chart shows the top 100 fastest Rubik's Cube solves per year, sorted by competitor. It's a cool way of seeing which cubers were dominant during each era of the WCA. The x-axis shows time from years 2003 to 2024, and the y-axis is roughly clustered by country, so competitors from the same country, like Patrick Ponce and Max Park, are next to each other and are colored the same color. The thickness of each competitor's branch represents how many top 100 solves they got, and you can actually zoom in and see each individual time. Anyway, we can start at the WCA's founding in 2003, a year that only had two competitions. If you averaged around 20 seconds per solve at that year's world championships, you could probably rack up 5 of the top 100 for that year. Watch Lars Vandenberg's 2003 solve in the upper right to get a sense of how people turned the cube at the time and watch it evolve over the next two decades. And in the end, it turns out Dan Knights won the competition with a 20 flat average. This early era is filled with the pioneers who devised the methods we use today. Jessica Friedrich, creator of CFOP. That's where you build a cross shape first. Lars Petrus, creator of the Petrus method. That's where you build blocks first. Gils Rue, creator of the Rue method. That's where you build the left and right sides first. And Zbigniew Zibarak the creator of the ZZ method. That's where you orient edges to be right side up first. Oh, there's also Lars Vandenberg, who invented the most popular method for the square one, a puzzle that can change shape. Our first speed cubing celebrity is Shotaro Makisumi, who dominated the mid 2000s including an impressive string of four world records that each broke a second barrier. These early years of the WCA also showed an explosion in the French speedcubing scene, with seven people in the top 100 in 2004 being from France. Not to be outdone, the Americans came back next year with 10 top 100ers in 2005. Gene Pons, the second most dominant speedcuber at the time, won World Championships 2005. Thibaut Jacquino got the first sub-10 single on May 5th, 2007. Edward Chambon, Ron Van Bruchum, Eric Ackersdijk, and a budding Harris Chan were not too far behind, finishing 2007 with six sub-10 singles. 2007 is also the most diverse year to date, with no single cuber getting more than 10 of the top 100 fastest solves of that year. Moving on, 2008 was a year of many iconic world records. First, 07 World Championships winner Yu Nakajima got back-to-back 8.72s, and then the aforementioned Eric Ackersdijk got a 7.08, which was almost 3 seconds faster than what the record was even 8 months earlier. As we move into 2009, we reach peak European dominance. An entire 63 of the top 100 solves that year came from Europe, led by Poland's Thomas Zolanowski, the Netherlands' Eric Ackersdijk, and 2009 World Championships winner Brendan Valence from the United Kingdom. 2009 also marks the end of the era of Type A to Type F DIY kits from Cube for You, with 2010 bringing in the revolutionary Diane Guhong with its reverse corner cutting, and 2011 bringing in the Diane Zanchi. As a result, the qualifying time to get into the top 100 went from an even 10.0 in 2009 to a staggering 8.69 in 2010. Well, that huge drop might also be attributed to another cause. And who's that? Oh yeah, it's Felix Zemdegs, the speedcuber with the most world records and most entries to the top 100 on this chart to date. Felix Zemdegs and Roe Hessler broke Eric's two-year long-standing 708 world record in late 2010 by getting speedcubing's first ever six singles. China, who previously hadn't been seen on this chart, got its first entry on the list this year, with Muluan Yin. Next, 2011 showed Thailand speedcubing at its peak and the rise of Mats Valk, the Netherlands' fourth speedcuber to have a large presence on this chart. 2011 also featured speedcubing's first sub-6, which was Felix's 566, Germany's Cornelius Dieckmann, and Poland's Mikhail Pleskowitz, who won World Championships 2011, which many expected Felix to win. He'd channel that energy for later. In 2012, there was a resurgence in Japan's presence, led by Yumu Tabuchi's 609. Also, Mats Valk got an astonishing 20% of the top 100 solves of 2012, which was the most that year. But his position as Europe's best speedcuber would be challenged the very next year, because the UK's Alexander Lau exploded onto the scene as the first Rue solver to make a prominent presence on this chart. In fact, in summer 2013, Alexander was the third person ever to get a sub-6 single, and was only 0.15 seconds away from the 3x3 average world record, proving that CFOP wasn't the only method to get world class. On the other side of the globe, Gabriel Dechichi Barbar scored three low 7 singles this year, becoming South America's biggest individual representative to date. Around this time, the WCA turned 10 years old, 
Mitch Lane got his infamous 6 to 5 second solve, and future world record holder Yi Hang Wong is born. Also, the United States, speedcubing's first powerhouse in 2006, had fallen to just 8% presence, with fewer entries on the list than three individual cubers. This is the lowest presence the US will ever have. But 2014 brought on a wave of American Gen Z cubers, like Lucas Eder, Colin Burns, and Kevin Costello III, that would help bring it back. The US would also have a string of lucky world record singles in 2015, from Colin Burns' 525 to Keaton Ellis' short-lived 509 to Lucas Eder's historic first sub-5 of 490, all PLL skips. Across the Pacific Pond, though, Felix Zemdegs would go on to be the only speedcuber in history to win two world championships back-to-back, -back, 2013 and 2015. Around this time, stickerless and magnetized speedcubes were starting to become the norm, helping drop the qualifying time from nearly 7 in 2014 to just 5.73 in 2017. In 2016, Sung Hyuk Nam reached his peak of 5 solves on this chart, and Hyun Kyo Kyung gets two ZZ solves in the top 100, 591 and 626. Alexander Carlier was bringing on a French renaissance, Bill Wong and Antoine Canton were putting Canada on the map, and Mikhail Pleskowitz became the most prominent non-Felix Cuber in 2015. Later, Mats Volk and Felix Zemdegs also scored world record singles of 474 and 473, just 0.01 apart. By February 2017, a budding Max Park was pulling impressive averages, like a 692 NAR average, but still no lucky sub-6 singles yet. That all changed later that year, when he got so many fives he started giving Felix a run for his money. Max Park snatched the world record average from Felix briefly in April with 639, won the world championships with the first ever sub-7 winning average, and got more entries in 2018's top 100 than Felix, the first time anyone had done that since 2012. Around this time, Dana Yi and Keaton Ellis went to the same competition, got the same scramble, and performed the exact same solution, getting 537 and 508 respectively, which put Dana as the highest ranked female speedcuber since Jessica Friedrich, and made it so Keaton's bittersweet 509 world record was no longer his PR. In 2017, Europe had also fallen to just 22% presence on this chart, a 41 point drop since 2009. But on the bright side of things, Fours were becoming more common, with Blake Thompson, Anthony Patarakis, Drew Brads, Kevin Gerhardt, and Sung Hyuk Nam joining the Sub-5 club. Oh, and Patrick Ponce, at just 15, got two fours in one competition, including the 469 world record single. Seung Byom Cho broke it with a surprisingly short 29 move 459 single, which Felix later tied in January 2018 and broke with a 422 in May 2018. That 422 also made Felix 492 in the same average become the WCA's first ever counting four. But all that was overshadowed by the biggest speedcubing event in 2018. In November, Yu Sheng Du's controversial 347 world record half Happen, a solve that brought skepticism because it only had security cam footage and was so far below the current world record, it would take nearly five years to beat. The Philippines also burst onto the scene in the late 2010s, with 11-year-old Leo Borromeo scoring three entries in 2018, and 11-year-old Sean Patrick Villanueva's 498 being Rue's first appearance on this chart since Alexander Lau's last appearance in 2015. Around this time, Denmark's Martin Vedel Egdal became the most well-rounded cuber across all events, scoring three 3x3 three three appearances in 2019. And Dylan Wong, of the million subscriber plus YouTube channel JPerm, pulled off an impressive 531 single here, being Canada's only representation for the next three years. Also, Juliet Sebastian broke the female world record with a 444, which was also the fastest in Europe at the time. But what's going on with the Vire brothers, prominent in speed cubing for nearly a decade, especially Sebastian at 4x4? They continue to pull impressive times, including multiple fours. Philip Vire even wins World Championships 2019, the closest championship ever, with the top six finalists all scoring within 0.011 seconds. But one last thing happened in 2019. A kid known for being really good at pyraminx started pseudo-slotting at 3x3, and suddenly he has 7 entries on this chart? But then, boom, pandemic. It's March 2020 and every country goes into lockdown. People managed to sneak in some competitions for those first 3 months, and in those 3 months, the US proved the most dominant, with 43 of the top 100 solves quintupling their presence since 2013. But because there were no competitions for the next 9 months, it was much easier to get into the top 100. You only needed 591 instead of 540, so a whole bunch of new names with fortunate timing started populating the list. In these COVID times, speedcubers resorted to unofficial cubing at home competitions, but none of those results count in the official WCA database. 
Let's fast forward to 2021. China recovers from the pandemic pretty early on and reopens competitions early in the year, allowing Chinese speedcubers to take over the scene from 4 to 24 appearances. Ye Jun Han breaks the Asian record average and misses Felix by just 0.04. But then Rei Hong Shu actually beats Felix's world record with a 548 average, being only the second non-Felix person to have that title in 11 years. Also, the 8-year-old Yi Heng Wang makes his first appearance in the top 100 this year at just 3 entries. On the European side of things, Poland's competitions start kicking into high gear, allowing Timon Kolosinski to score 34 of the year's top 100 solves. That's getting close to Felix's record of 38 and Shotaro's record of 42. Back in the States, Max Park gets a 532 world record average, but Timon beats it with a 509 by the end of the year. Then, in 2022, China goes back into lockdown because of the Omicron variant of COVID, allowing the United States to sweep a staggering 60% of the chart. Luke Garrett, Maddie Hirota Inaba, Max Xiao, and Patrick Ponce repeatedly pull impressive numbers, with Maddie even getting an unofficial 308 at North American Championships, proving that the four year old 347 world record isn't so untouchable after all. Timon Kolosinski and Max Park also both get the exact same world record average of 480 six being the first ones ever to average under 5 seconds, and fulfilling the prediction made 20 years earlier by Jessica Friedrich, the inventor of the method Timon and Max mastered. In 2022, Leo Borromeo is back. The Netherlands, with Tuan Dolomond, is back. Canada, with TPS god Kyle Santucci, and OG Bill Wong are also back. But then, boom, China's reopened. Enter the era of Yi Heng Wong. Yi Heng, only 9 or 10 years old at the time, starts pulling off pauseless solves more consistently than anyone else ever has, and repeatedly gets sub-5 averages, not singles, but averages. Yi Heng alone brings the average world record down from 486 to 469, and then an unfathomable 448, including two sub-4 singles, it's the first counting three ever. To give you a sense of how dominant Yi Heng Wang is in this era, out of the top 100 averages ever done, Yi Heng has 53 of them, and the remaining 130,000 other competitors in the WCA share the remaining 47. Outside of Yi Heng, other stuff has happened in these last few years too, like Max Park breaking Yu Sheng Du's historic 347 with an even more historic 3.13 second solve, which is, still today, the fastest official Rubik's Cube solve ever. Luke Garrett has also gotten four threes, the third most ever, and Timon has pulled off a crazy number of European records, a handful of which were full step. And if it weren't for Timon, Europe would have just two solves in 2023, a record low tied with South America. Speaking of South America, they have five of the top 100 solves of 2024 so far, which is the most they've ever gotten, thanks to Kayo Hideyake Sato of Brazil and Claudio and Augustin of Chile. Being the goat of speed cubing, Felix Zemdegs has managed to hold on to at least one entry each year in the 2020s. But Jode Brewster did take his Oceanic record with a 388 single, Oceania's first three. Next, Ling Kuan Jiang, Rei Hong Shu, Ryan Pilot, Dylan Miller, and Maddie Hiroto Inaba are all holding on to multiple entries in 2024, too. And Magdalena Pabis broke the female world record with a 424. Also, Brennan Lin, Kyle Santucci, and Morgan Ye are representing Canada well. And to summarize all that, the threshold for making it into 2023's top 100 was sub 4.5, thanks in big part to Yi Hang. But for 2024, it's only 457, and that's because we're only 5 months into the year, so there hasn't been as much time for fast solves to roll in. But yeah, that's about it for my stacked area chart. A few things to note, I wrote a couple Python scripts to generate this graph, which I'm gonna put on GitHub. Check out the GitHub repo if you want to tinker with this yourself. The code also works well with other events too, such as solving a Rubik's Cube blindfolded as you can see here, or or square one, or even 2x2 two two averages. Just read the README to see how to use it. Also, yes, these sorts of graphs are biased towards speedcubers who go to a lot of competitions, but I don't think that's too much of an issue. Also, I probably mispronounced some names, so sorry about that. And huge thanks to NBA Recap Pod, whose five minute TikTok on a graph of the top basketball players year by year inspired me to make this video. If you're watching this NBA Recap, I want you to know that you made a fascinating video for a non basketball fan. Thanks for watching this video and goodbye!